Hey YouTube, I hope you guys are all doing well. It's Adrian Hunter from over here at Pipe Dream Hookah, and today I have a tutorial for you guys. And I think that this tutorial is going to be especially helpful for a lot of newer smokers that might be having a little bit of trouble with this method. I'm going to be teaching you how to pack El Fokker into a red clay Egyptian bowl. First things first, let's run through the little checklist of all the materials that we're going to need to complete this packing method. We are going to be using two different flavors of alfaca today. It's going to be gum with mint and kiwi at a 70% to 30% mix ratio. A little bit later, we're going to need some foil to actually foil our bowl so we can put coals onto it. I always like to use an oyster fork and a foil poker when I'm packing alfaca into a red clay Egyptian bowl. These are probably going to be slightly more controversial items. I'm going to be using paper towel and scissors. And I'll show you why in just a moment. A lot of people disagree with this, but after tons of testing, I find that this is the way to get a fucker to smoke the easiest and for the longest. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this method. First things first, let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need immediately. So I'm gonna put this foil to the side. I'm gonna get rid of these scissors for now, and I'm gonna remove this poker. And we can start with portioning. So like I said, we're gonna do a mix of about 70% the gum with mint and 30% the kiwi. So we'll start with what we're gonna be using uh, more of, I guess. And that is going to be Elfacker's gum. So first things first, go ahead and stir up your Elfacker to get the juices flowing. You don't really want to smoke dry alfacker. That isn't going to uh, that isn't going to give you a very good session at all. And once you've got your alfacker all nice and stirred up, we're actually going to go ahead and use our bowl as a measuring cup. We just want to go ahead and fork enough of the tobacco in there that it looks roughly like 70% of the bowl is full of tobacco. And it's okay if it's a little bit dense because we are going to break it up a little bit later. The big stem. We don't really want that. So that looks like it's going to more or less be roughly 70% of the bowl, so we can go ahead and close up this gum with mint. I'm going to be reviewing this flavor soon if anyone's interested because I've been quite impressed with the flavor profile that the gum with mint does produce. Now let's fill the rest of this bowl with kiwi. Same thing, mix her up. Get the juices flowing and just go ahead and use your fork. A uh, quick note, you can use your hands as well. Elfacker just dyed red and it gets really messy really fast if you go with your hands. So uh, my recommendation is usually to use an oyster fork. Not everyone agrees with that, but different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Let's go ahead and get this kiwi in here. And that's probably something close to correct. Let's get rid of our kiwi. Oh, if you're interested in checking out the flavor profile on this Elfacker kiwi, I would head over to the, uh, the Shisha Savage, Sally's channel, and check out her review on Elfacker Kiwi. I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description if any of you are interested in looking into this flavor. Now once we have our bowl filled to just about the rim level and at basically the density that it comes in the pa Elfacker packaging, we want to actually mix it up because Elfacker, unlike a lot of the dark leaf stuff, you can go ahead and mix it up before putting it into the bowl and it will retain the flavor profile pretty well. Now there is something to be said for mixing it side by side instead of pre-mixing it. It gives you a slightly different flavor profile, but that's not what I'm going to be going over today. So let's go ahead and empty this and get into why this paper towel is a little controversial. I highly suggest you try it before you knock it because this is something I've been doing for a pretty long time and it yielded great results. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys today. So go ahead and mix your alfacker, kiwi, and gum with mint up on top of this paper towel to get all of the tobacco evenly distributed. And then we are going to dry our tobacco out just a little bit, and I'll show you how. Some people get a little overzealous with the drying of their tobacco, and I think this is why a lot of people disagree with them, because when you're paying for 250 grams of tobacco, a lot of what you're paying for is that molasses and glycerin and honey or whatever they use to, uh, or whatever they use to bind your shisha tobacco together. You're actually paying for that in the weight of the tobacco. So a lot of people look down on removing these juices, and for the most part, they're correct. A lot of tobaccos rely on these juices to get the smoke that you want. But I find that alfaca is just a little bit too juicy for what you want to do with it. And I mean just a little bit. So what we're going to do is just take it on the paper towel like this, fold the paper towel over once, and give it one good press for like two to three seconds. That's all you need. You don't want to like dehydrate your shisha tobacco or anything. You can kind of see here how much molasses is left on the paper towel. You don't want any more than that. 
Now moving on to the next thing, I'm going to go ahead and cut my alfacar up just a little bit. I think that alfacar's cut is really choppy and inconsistent, and in my experience this can make it a little bit difficult to pack correctly. Now this is mostly a matter of preference, and if you want to skip this step you can. You're going to yield good results as long as you've done what I've done up to this point, and then skip this part and move on to the next step. But if you're interested in how I do it, just go ahead and watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to chop it up. We're only going to do one pass of the shishi tobacco through the scissors. We don't really want to chop it up too fine, we just want to make the cut a little bit more consistent. And there we go. As you can see here, it's a little more fluffy and it should be a little bit easier to manage. Now as you saw when I was testing the uh, amount that I needed with my red clay bowl, it was pretty much full. But since we've gotten rid of some of the juice and we've chopped the tobacco down to a little bit finer of a cut, it's actually going to take up quite a bit less space than it did before. And I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these extra materials that we do not need. Okay you guys, so now we're actually going to put the tobacco into the bowl and execute on the packing method that I think it's going to perform the best at. So first things first is we actually just want to take our tobacco, make sure it's fluffy, and it should be fluffy from what we just did to it. And we're just going to fluff pack it into the bowl. Just indiscriminately let the tobacco fall from your fingertips into the bowl. It doesn't really matter where it falls because we are going to make some micro adjustments before we boil it. Kind of contradicting myself here, I said earlier in the video I wanted to avoid that murder hand situation, but this packing method is almost going to force you into it, so that is something to keep in mind when you go for this packing method. Okay, so once you've reached this point and you've fluffed your tobacco into the bowl, the next thing you can do is take our foil poker and just even it out. You don't want to dense it down at all, you just want to kind of even it out so that it's flat, and you will see that once it's evened out, it'll actually lay just at rim level, so I'll show you that right now. There we go. From this point, we're actually gonna make a hole in the center of the bowl. If any of you caught my video on how to pack Nakla 2 apples into an Egyptian bowl, you're gonna be familiar with this method. We're just gonna take our foil poker and run it down the middle of the bowl until it goes through the center hole. We're just gonna spin it around a little bit to kind of move the tobacco out of the way, and then we'll remove our foil poker and we'll take our small pinky finger and just make sure to push the tobacco out of the way, completely exposing the hole at the bottom of the bowl. It'll look something like this. And once you're at this point, you can go ahead and do the final adjustment to the tobacco. You can actually take your fingertips and just lightly dense it underneath the bowl so the tobacco does not touch the foil at all once you do the foiling process. Because alfacar does not like to be touched. It can handle a little bit of heat, but the second you touch it, it's going to scorch. Alright you guys, we are almost done. There's just a couple more steps and the first of those is to foil our bowl. We're going to take one layer of heavy duty foil and we're going to put it down on the bowl, shiny side down. And we're going to try to drum tight it around the rim so the foil doesn't actually drag down and touch your tobacco. Once you're at that point, you just want to kind of wrap your hands around it so you can torque the foil down. Just like that. And then you can bring your fingers together like this. And just do a final torque of the foil to make sure that it's in its most drum tight state. It'll look something like that. And one of the things I like to do once I get it drum tight is just run one of my fingers around the rim of the bowl to kind of seal it up so the foil doesn't have any play to it when you're poking holes. Last but not least, we're going to take our foil poker and poke a three ring hole pattern around the bowl, starting from the outside of the rim and working our way in. And we're going to leave the center of the bowl basically untouched. We don't want to pack any holes in there because right underneath that is that pseudo spire we made with our pinky finger and we don't want to draw air directly into that. We want most of our air to pass through the tobacco so we get maximum flavor and clouds. Let's go ahead and poke some holes. And there we go. That's what your hole pattern should look like. Spacing should be pretty similar to that. But again, like I say in most of my hole packing segments, the hole pattern doesn't matter so much. What we're mainly looking for is airflow. Now you can stop at this point, but I like to do one more final step to kind of make the bowl a little more aesthetically pleasing. I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the skirt of foil to make it a little more even around. You can obviously skip this step. This is very much just for aesthetics. And here's our final product. Now I'm going to go ahead and go start some coals and prepare a hookah so I can show you guys how this bowl smokes. I will be right back in just a moment. Alright, let's go ahead and get into our setup for the day. 
As you can see, I'm going to be using the Starbuzz Atlantis 1.0, the short version to smoke it out of, with the matching blue Starbuzz base. I'm using the Thunder Dark Hose to smoke it out of. This is a pretty new hose to me, and there will be a review coming out on this fairly soon. I got my little B2 mouth tip on there, matches the Starbuzz pretty well. A video on these coming soon as well. And obviously, I went ahead and used my Egyptian bowl that I just packed for you guys with three titanium flats on top to heat our bowl. Now, we're only in like the first two minutes of the session, but I'm going to go ahead and pull some clouds for you guys so you can see what the cloud output looks like with this packing method. So as you guys can see, even this early in the session, I'm pulling pretty fantastic clouds out of this bowl. And the draw is pretty wide open, there's just the slightest bit of restriction to it. Now normally you get a little bit more restriction when packing an Egyptian bowl, but because of that little hole I made in the center, it actually allows air to move more freely through the bowl. I do have to tell you guys that there is more than one way to pack Elfakar into an Egyptian bowl. If you're feeling lazy, you can just go ahead and mix the Elfakar up in the container and take it straight from the packaging and sprinkle pack it into your bowl. Make sure it's underneath the rim and foil it. It's going to smoke fine this way. However, if you pack it the way that I've packed it, like I just said, you're going to get very good airflow. The shish tobacco is going to burn very evenly, and it is going to be fairly heat resistant when you pack it this way. If you do decide to pack your alfaca without drying it up just a little bit, I find that it heats up just a little bit too fast for my liking, and you can actually char the bowl if you're not careful. So that's just something to keep in mind if you decide to go with the more traditional packing method for alfaca in an Egyptian clay bowl. Now this obviously isn't a review on the uh, mix of gum with mint and kiwi, but I do have to say that the flavor profile is outstanding when using this pack. I get that really nice minty refreshing flavor from the gum with mint, and the kiwi is cutting through the mix giving it this really nice sweet fruity undertone. Before I let you guys off the hook, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple more clouds as the session has been going for about 10-15 minutes now. So the clouds have gotten even a little bit bigger. Alright everyone, so that should just about wrap up my video tutorial on how to pack Alfakar into a red clay Egyptian bowl. If you decided to go ahead and try this packing method out, do me a favor and let me know how your session went down in the comments below. And if you have any requests for any other tutorials or reviews on hookah products that you might like to see, go ahead and leave a request for those down in the comments below. I would be more than happy to take your requests for any reviews or tutorials that you'd like to see in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy smoking.